Welcome to episode 48 of the Desmond's Flicks podcast. After a two-month hiatus, I'm back with an interview with Chad Archibald, writer, director, and producer of films such as Bite, The Heretics, and I'll Take Your Dead. I've also partnered with Black Fawn Distributions to do a giveaway on my YouTube channel on my review for Bite. If you'd like a chance to win a free copy of a movie from Black Fawn Distributions, go and check out my review and comment on that video. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the podcast, and enjoy the episode. I am here with Chad Archibald, writer, director, producer of films such as Bite, The Heretics, and I'll Take Your Dead. Welcome to the podcast, Chad. Thanks so much, Desmond. It's great. It's, uh, it's good to chat with people during this crazy time, you know? Oh, I know. I know. We, we all can just virtually reach out to one another. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been a big fan of your work. Um, I've really enjoyed your films. And um, one of the big things that I've noticed about your movies is that each one of them is very unique, from Bite to The Heretics to I'll Take Your Dead. What's kind of the process behind coming up with these ideas? What are your inspirations? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've uh, been working over the last couple of years with a company called Breakthrough Entertainment. Um, we've got a great partnership. And a couple of years ago, we uh, signed an eight-picture deal with them. So we were set to produce eight films um, over a couple of years. And they're all fairly low budget, but... Uh, all the content we were creating ourselves, uh, or the majority of it, um, or at least kind of uh, developing with filmmakers. So it was it was a big endeavor, especially considering we started it with no projects and uh, had to kind of design them all and develop them all. So uh, one of the biggest things that we knew would be that a lot of these films would be coming out, you know, relatively close to each other within like a year of each other. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure that you know, we were always doing something different and fresh. And, you know, after we kind of tackled one subgenre, we'd go for another one. And, you know, we were always looking to do something and reinvent ourselves a little bit. You know, we, we never want to make the same movie over and over again. Um, but at the same time, you know, we do, there are things that we really love to do. And, you know, we've kind of, you can see our little, um, you know, our, our fingers in a bunch of different aspects of a bunch of these um, these films as far as the storytelling of it. So, I mean, it was uh, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, me and my business partner Cody Callahan, um, who directed the Any Social movies and Letter Out, um, yeah, we'd uh, we started this um, we started basically doing this thing, which was like you know once every month and a bit we'd rent a cottage somewhere, we'd just go up there for a week, and we just cover the walls in paper, start going back and forth about ideas and concepts, and um, you know just just cover the walls and marker and um just ideas for horror films and, and just kind of bash them all out and see what we can come up with and you know by the end of the week we hope to have like one idea of you know a hundred and that was going to be like you know an idea that really stuck and you know we'd go home and and workshop it a little bit and see if it survived but uh and uh, sometimes it did. And sometimes, you know, we went on to make those scripts. And sometimes, you know, the ideas are just buried somewhere in our hard drives, you know. Uh, so, I mean, that was kind of our, our process. And we still do that uh, to this day. Um, we're just doing it on a, a bit bigger of a scale um, with, a, with a lot more people involved. But, yeah, I mean, it's uh, every, every film's kind of different. And uh, a lot of what we do is development and and looking for scripts as well so even though there's some some stuff that we're developing for ourselves to direct right now we're also looking for other teams and other filmmakers and uh and other scripts that really stand out so and that's the big thing that i've that i've noticed about black fawn productions specifically is that there's a wide variety of different kinds of films within the horror subgenre and thrillers, et cetera, like Harpoon, for example, which I thought was fantastic. Um, and um, the, the first film I saw of yours was Bite. Can you talk about the process of that film and some of the practical effects in that movie? Because the the transformation of the main lead is 
pretty incredible, especially for a smaller indie film. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, it's funny. That was the second film that we did on the, on the slate with breakthrough. And it was, um, it was an idea that I had one day and pitch it, pitched it. It was kind of like the fly, but more organic, you know, there wasn't, an, there wasn't much science behind it. It was a lot of it was more of a natural process. It was basically about a girl who gets bit by a bug and starts turning into a bug. Um, so that was kind of like the main idea. And then we kind of evolved into this, this concept where it's this woman who is getting married and she's not quite ready to settle down and have kids, but she's getting a lot of pressure from her husband and humans being, you know, one of the few species in the world that make a decision whether they want to have kids or not. Um, you know, she was just struggling with it, but after she gets bit by this bug and she starts turning into this bug, she starts laying eggs everywhere and this kind of natural instinct this insect instinct kind of takes over and she ends up being kind of the mother of all these these eggs and and her motherly like uh protection kind of kicks in and she ends up you know basically attacking anyone who comes in to to hurt her children kind of thing um so yeah, we dove into it and we were, uh, it, the script came together super quick. I worked with Jamie LaForest on it. Um, and again, it's like we started the slate and it was kind of like, cool, day one, what are we going to do? And we we ended up doing a movie called The Sublet, which was a script that was already created. Um, John Ainsley directed it. Uh, and it turned out great. And we did Bite right after. And we actually took the set from The Sublet and just moved some walls around and repainted and, you know, redesigned the whole thing, but same space and everything. I almost shot the movies back to back. Um, but what we wanted to do with Bite was just create something that was like fun and super gross and just, you know, really utilize a lot of the gross special effects, practical effects that, that you know, we loved in 80s films. And, and um, we dove into that one again with a very, very small budget. It was a non-union film. A lot of the cast was the first time they'd ever been in a movie. Um, so it was, uh, it was a challenge for sure, but it was definitely one of the most fun, uh, shoots that we've ever done. Every day, the set just got worse and worse and more decayed. And, and, um, you know, we basically shoot throughout the day. Then our team would come in at night and kind of turn into more of a hive. And then everyone would show up the next day and walk in and, you know, be all excited to see how much grosser this film got. Um. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. And um, it, once we showed the movie to someone, uh, some of our friends, just a little test screening, um, we realized how gross it was, I guess. It's like, we, we saw how all these effects happened and, you know, it didn't really gross us out, but there was some people that watched it and were just disgusted because um, some people are just sensitive to that kind of thing, you know, like, goo and eggs and like you know insects and things like that some people aren't affected as much but we knew it was pretty gross so when we had the world premiere of it at fantasia in montreal um we actually printed out a bunch of barf bags for it and handed that <laughs> handed them out to the audience and uh, we were watching the movie and i was actually at the back um and i hate watching films with an audience i just like I don't know. It's always such a stressful thing for me. Um, I love making movies, love getting them out there and whatnot, but it's, uh, it's always, I always find it really stressful um, watching them with an audience. I feel like you critique it so much harder. But anyways, while I was watching this, it's like I saw some commotion going down, like in the kind of middle right of the theater. Um, I heard some noises and some, some commotion from people. Then I saw someone kind of moving around and I, like, I, I, I was didn't really know what was going on, but uh, after the credits started rolling, the festival programmer came in and rushed over to me and goes, "Dude, this is happening outside right now." And he showed me the uh, uh, a photo that he had just tweeted, and it was ambulances out front of uh, the theater, and I, I didn't even really know what was happening, but I guess someone had got up because they weren't feeling well from watching the film and fainted and hit their head on the steps. Oh and, no! Um, some people had to come help them and the ambulance they called an ambulance they were bleeding and uh ambulance came to pick them up 
Um, and then we also found out after two people threw up in the theater. One of them was right beside uh, one of our lead actresses. Um, so it was uh, oh. it was actually fantastic. Like this is exactly the reaction we wanted. Um, and it, it, I think Fantasia called it a, a, a falling a falling ovation, um, <laughs> which was which was great. And we ended up we got so much press from it. You know the movie's on so many like you know grossest films ever made lists, and uh, you know movies that people couldn't couldn't sit through lists. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. I mean, I did press for uh, months after that, um, all over the world, um, radio shows and whatnot, just because the story got out there and spread like wildfire. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, a again, I, I'm always, I always loved that movie because it was just such a fun process to go through and uh, just such, such a fun movie to make. And I mean, the cast was, was so great in it. Elma uh, Begovic was was uh, the lead actress and she went through so much makeup and such a transformation in it and she was such a trooper during the whole thing that uh you know we're all all really proud of this little film that we went out and made in you know 14 days oh wow you shot it over 14 days yeah actually we shot it in 14 days in uh guelph ontario and then we flew down to dominican this was kind of like this was like the uh the reward i guess for like you know doing this gross gooey shoot is that we flew all the cast down to dominican and we got to shoot the stuff for the intro of the film um on like an all-inclusive resort and everyone loved it they all had so much fun and stuff so it was uh, a a couple days that we shot down there as well so that's awesome i love that i mean the the amount of fun that you all had on the film it, it translates to the screen because I can, as I was watching, I was like, everyone in this movie is totally buying in on the idea. And you were able to use, you know, such a small budget, to, but make it, you know, larger than it actually was, which made it feel like very immersive. Um, and the body horror in it is fantastic. I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Well, we had fun making it. <laughs> and, um, you know, speaking of uh, your films, I just watched um, on Netflix, actually, um, The Heretics. And um, that was a movie that I, I didn't know where it was going. I went in completely blind, just wanted to go and check it out. And, um, and you, you really subverted my expectations, especially once we get to uh, the third act. Um, what was the process of that film? And um, you know, what was um, some of the inspirations that you took from you know, other films or media that you know, inspired you for that film? Um, yeah, I, that movie was a film, or, or it was a tricky one. Like, I, I had recently rewatched Kill List, I think, um, before I started working on that one. And uh, yeah, I love that movie. I thought it was, it was so cool and interesting and weird. And um, just wanted to do something, always wanted to do something a little bit culty, but, you know, more horror and. Um, have some fun with it and, you know, do something that was a little different. It's got its own kind of religious ideas. It's not like based on Christianity or anything. It's, it's kind of got its own, <clears throat> its own idea. Um, but also trying to create something that was um, a little like contained enough. Like the original idea was actually very, very different. It was about a guy who, um, would have seizures and was convinced that he, that God was talking to him and said that um, he needs to do, he needs to kidnap this girl because she's an angel. And he, you know, he's this weird guy. He looks like he's from the seventies with big glasses and his whole house looks like it's basically from the seventies. And, you know, he's a tortured guy who sees visions of his family, like his parents who are abusive. And he ends up kidnapping this girl and keeping her in his basement. And, um, her, she was slowly evolving and changing into something. So that was the original idea for it. Um, but it just kind of felt a little, we, we had some hiccups in the story that we couldn't really crack and whatever. And we just kept evolving and evolving until it became the story that is right now. Um, so I definitely uh, went through some, some variations of, of plot, but uh, we were really, really happy with how it turned out. That's actually, I worked with Jamie LaForest on that one as well, um, who wrote Bite 
So it was uh, it was another great experience with him. And, uh, you know, I was so pumped to get Ryan Barrett again uh, to come on board. I've worked with uh, with him on the majority of films that I've directed over the years. Um, and also working with uh, Georgia and Nina, you know, is a, a great cast, great group of people to work with. And, uh, you know, a lot of fun start to finish. Again, that one was, a, you know, was a very hard shoot. We actually built that cabin way, way back in a, a farmer's field. Um, there was a forest just off to the side and, and, you know, you had to drive through, I think, three farmer's fields to get to it. So it was actually in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we had like the RV that's in the movie was actually our makeup RV. So it was, uh, again, another very low budget one. Um, you know, I, we just kind of reached out to a bunch of friends and stuff and said on Facebook and said, Hey, does anybody want to come help build a, a cabin, you know, this weekend or whatever. And, uh, it's amazing how many people love building stuff and never really get the chance to do something like that like we wanted to go out and build a cabin that wasn't perfect you know we wanted to build something that was like um it just looked cool and you know you didn't have to do a lot of the legwork when it comes to building a house or a cabin that, that's like not fun like all the the leveling and foundations and stuff like that this was like just down and dirty we're building just a really cool cabin um so the, it's amazing how many people came out and we're just so pumped to come on board and and just build this build the set um it took us i think uh eight days to build the whole thing i think we did it over four weekends um and you know we had a, a fire pit out there and just like cooked a bunch of food on the fire pit and it was uh it was really really fun it was a really fun experience building it um and then we had it built we got let it sit for a while and let it kind of nature grow around it and then uh went out and filmed the film the movie so it was uh again a pretty cool pretty cool experience and i gotta say the the practical effects and the yet again another transformation for the lead that was so cool especially like you know how you made um the little pieces on her back like wiggle around um i thought that was so great <laughs> yeah and i mean that stuff's all it's all practical and it's all very simple it's like when she's sitting there and those little pieces are moving on her back it's, I'm, I'm literally behind with my fingers poking them like, <laughs> it's nothing crazy it's just you know us trying to to make something work with a, a very low budget you know um but i think that's what it's about anytime you're doing indie filmmaking is about you know utilizing what you can instead of trying to go out and be as ambitious as you can try to do things that are a little simpler and uh just make sure you you nail them you know yeah absolutely and it you know it translates well to screen and um you know your your latest film which um that that was my um introduction to to black fawn films was um i'll take your dead from last year and that that was a fantastic film. Really well done. I, I really, really enjoyed that movie. And he had a great cast, um, especially um, the uh, very young actress that you had in there. She was great. Um, what can you tell me about um, I'll Take Your Dead and, and kind of like where it, where that idea came from and, and also like finding finding the fantastic cast that you had in this film? Yeah. Um, yeah, I did a, a documentary for Crime Prevention Canada years ago, like a decade ago, probably. Um, and it was to try to keep kids out of gangs and whatnot. And they actually flew me across Canada to a bunch of different shelters where I got to interview, you know, kids on the street and families on the street, parents um, um, that had been involved in gang activity and kind of swallowed up by it. And I was just amazed, even in my Canada, that these things happen and how insane, you know, some of the, the gang warfare is. Um, and the thing I was most shocked about was just hearing some of these people's stories, how they were like, you know, just a, a normal, everyday, middle class family or, you know, single father, single mother, whatever. And how they just met the wrong person at the wrong time and they just got manipulated and threatened and just sucked into this like world that they didn't know how to get out of and they felt like they couldn't go to the police they couldn't go anywhere like their family was in danger and all of a sudden you know 
years later they're out of it but they're homeless and they've lost everything and you know some of them went to jail for it and like and it's um it's just it it really stuck with me how quickly and um how quickly you know some good people could get sucked into a situation that they didn't know how to deal with um and they just went with it because they felt like it was their only the only answer um so i wanted to kind of make a movie that that encompassed that a little bit and with i'll take your dead um you know we have the uh father william who's you know he, he was a butcher he lived on a farm very simple man uh lost his wife and you know one day some people showed up and threatened him and his daughter and said you need to get rid of this body and basically said you know i know a ton of people if you go to the police i'm uh I'm, I'm going to have them come here and, and hurt your daughter. So at this point, you know, him not knowing what to do, he he went along with it. And, you know, we pick up the story after he's been doing it for a while and really hates doing it. And his daughter, you know, is growing up. It's a bit of a coming of age story for, with her as well. And she's witnessed so many dead bodies getting dropped off that it's almost, you know, he can only shield her from it for so long she's a curious kid and they live on a, a farm in the middle of you know the middle of nowhere so uh it's just she becomes kind of so aware of it that you know it, it gets to the point that you know she's helping carry the bodies in and you know he doesn't know what he's he doesn't know what he's doing he's stressed he doesn't know if he's protecting his daughter or traumatizing her or what's going on and you know eventually um someone drops off a body of a girl and whenever he goes to cut her apart and get rid of the body he realizes that she's still alive um being a good person he doesn't know what to do and he ends up um bringing her to one to his spare room and and kind of tying her up and trying to rehabilitate her a little bit but again he doesn't you know he's not going to kill the girl he's not a murderer that's not what he does but he also can't just let her go because you know he's worried that he doesn't have no idea who she is she could run and tell the police she could run and tell them who knows eventually when these people find out that she's still alive they come to finish the job and he has a he has a, a very difficult moral decision to make uh to protect his daughter or protect her or give her up and basically be part of um murdering a human being and you know that that film was incredibly suspenseful and i i also really liked a, a lot of the kind of action that was infused in that film um you know are you looking into kind of expanding uh the different types of films that you do because because it's you know very much predominantly within um the horror genre are you looking into branching out into like maybe action or thriller or is your niche um horror yeah i mean um as a company um black fawn has recently done um the last two films that we did, uh, one was called The Oak Room, directed by Cody Callahan, uh, and it was a it was like a mystery thriller. Um, it's just in post right now. It's just finishing up, and and you know was about to go to festivals until this all went down. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely like it's a it's a slow burn mystery thriller, and uh, you know we're super proud of it. We're super proud of how it all came together. It stars R.J. Mitty from Breaking Bad. Um, Peter Outerbridge from, you know, a ton of stuff here in Canada. Um, it's, it's a great cast. It's actually got Ari Millen in it as well, who, um, played Reggie and I'll Take Your Dead. So it's a, it's, it's a bunch of Canadian, you know, legends, um, put into a, a really cool, interesting mystery. So it's definitely something very different than what we've done before. And it came from a, a play, actually, that played at the Fringe Festival years ago uh, and won Best best New Play uh, Award. So it was kind of fun developing that from a, from a play into a screenplay um, and then eventually to screen. And uh, it was kind of cool because Ari Millen actually was in the play um, years ago and then in the movie as well. So uh, it was a really, really fun thing uh, that we did. Um, you know, we're excited for it to get out to festivals and see how it does. Um, 
because again, it's definitely out of our wheelhouse. It's, it's something that, you know, I'm not even what, sure would play at genre festivals. Um, so, you know, that's where we're at with that. Um, and then most recently we finished up a shoot um, called Vicious Fun. Uh, that was directed by Cody as well. I produced it. And it's like a horror comedy, which is another thing that we haven't really done before. So we're always trying to kind of reinvent ourselves, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's called Vicious Fun. It stars uh, David Kettner, who's uh, from The Office and uh, Anchorman, Champ Kind and Anchorman, uh, as well as, you know, a ton of people, Ari Millen's in that one as well, um, Evan Marsh, uh, Amber Goldfarb, um, Julian Richings. Anyway, it, it's the first time we did a horror comedy. And it's uh, it turned out so good. We've had so much fun in, in post with it. Um, we're just in post sound right now, and uh, can't wait to see what the final product looks like. But it's uh, it's something we're really really excited about. And we also uh, worked with it uh, uh, with a particular crowd, which is a, a, a company that uh, we've just started doing films with, uh, along with Breaks Entertainment, and uh, we're we're just kind of working on a slate of films with them right now. Um, developing projects and whatnot so we're uh we're really excited for that to hit festivals as well whenever festivals start happening again uh but you know we're always looking to to reinvent ourselves you know we always we love horror films and we love staying with genre films um but i definitely don't think that you know it would stop us from doing a drama um or any genre really like we just love storytelling and you know with all of our films we always say you know, you should be able to strip out all the horror from it and you should still have a compelling story that people would want to watch. So, you know, making a, a, a change from horror to, to a drama or anything else, you know, I, I, we'd definitely be up for the challenge. Um, but I mean, at our roots, we love horror films. We love making genre films. We love, you know, we'd love to do a sci-fi sometime soon. Um, I did a sci-fi uh, with Forsyth Features called Ejecta. Uh, couple years ago and uh it, it was a lot of fun so yeah we never want to make the same film twice we always want to keep evolving and and you know keep making movies that we'd want to see and other people hopefully would too that's great man and you know that's one of the things that i that i really like about you guys is i i always like supporting um indie indie horror uh, films and indie horror makers um, and and that's something that I strive for on my channel is to really promote these films so that more people can can check them out and it's and it's great that you guys are around with you know some really good uh, storytelling and really good um, you know character development that's that's one of the big things that I see as well is the well fleshed out characters which you know, sometimes horror films and, and thrillers, they don't have, you know, enough character development that gets you to side with the victim or with your main character. But that's something that I've noticed is a, a ongoing trend with your films, just in general with Black Fawn, is the attention to character and, and story and plot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we love we love designing characters and we love... Um you know, trying to make characters who are, who are unique and stand out and, um, you know, have their own journeys to kind of go through. Uh, and I do agree. I, I think a lot of horror films, uh, a lot of filmmakers start with horror films, um, because they're fun to make and, you know, there is a market for them even at the indie level. Um, so I, I, I do think a lot of films get produced, um, even when a script's not ready in the horror genre. Whereas a lot of other genres, it's like for anyone to put any money into it, you know, they really, they really focus on the script. Um, but I mean, anytime we're developing characters, it's, it's always, you know, we always go through a bit of a process where we try to make that decision of like, there's what you would think the character would, would be in this scenario. Um, and sometimes, you know, it works out great. Um, but we also try to sit back and be like, you know, have we seen this character? Is this just too easy? You know, is this, this character writing itself and something that, you know, isn't going to bring life to the story? Is it a character that people have seen before? Is it someone, you know, how can we make this person unique? You know, like, what if they did this? You know, what if, what if something was different? So we always push ourselves to not just go the easy route with a character. Sometimes, you know, just try to 
really question our decisions and and make sure that it's you know nobody wants to see the same character over and over again um and a lot of times they're whether we know it or not they're subconsciously based off of an awesome character that we know in cinema um so you always want to make something a little different and not try to replicate something that somebody absolutely mastered already and you're just going to do a poor job at it so um yeah i mean it, it's definitely something that we focus on a lot um as well with our entire story i think a great script has all all these elements need to to be in there you know you have to have a great concept you have to have something that's unique and stands out you've got to have great characters you've got to have you know some twists and turns and and um you know something that that's engaging and you want to try to kind of mix up mix it all up a little bit you know um but we have a lot of focus on that and you know our scripts go through a lot of uh a lot of people they go through a lot of eyes before we actually get to make them especially right now um you know back when we were doing bite and stuff like that it's a uh, it's we had a lot of con kind of creative control over everything and um a lot of trust at, at that level but as our budgets get higher you know there's a lot more people that that need to sign off on these scripts before um, we go to camera with them so one thing that we've learned over the years is is when we started writing scripts we were always so like we kept them really close to us and we were like you know we think it's going to be great and even if other people read in like it's not registering we know that you know we're going to fix the things when we make the movie and you know we were always you know kind of held it and, and we take people's notes and be like, I don't know if I agree with that. And we always kept it really close. Um, but over the years after doing these films and realizing like, oh man, like the movie's done and it still has the issues that the script had, you know, it, you really realize that it's like when you got to make the changes at script level um, and you got to, the best thing you can do is, is give your script to a ton of people who, um, who read scripts and can give great notes and and will give you a bunch of comments and thoughts and and uh, you know let you know what they liked and what they don't like and what they think's working and what's not working and uh, so every time we have a script it's like you know we'll send every draft of it that we do we'll send it to like 10 people or more and um, take down all their notes and we'll just cross -re reference them and if you know six people say there's an issue with this scene okay no matter how much we like that scene we got to resolve this issue you know um or you know if there's one person that has an issue with something but nine don't it's like yeah we weigh the idea maybe it's just a really great point that no one thought of or maybe it's just you know not everyone's going to feel the same way about it um so by doing that it's like you know we really get a lot of great input and then we also like if somebody emails us back and they're like this script's great it's perfect you know don't change a thing then we make sure we never send them a script again because there's no way our scripts are perfect, you know? Um, so we always go through that process um, because at this point it's like, you know, we have us who are very, very hard on our scripts because, you know, we've been trained that way by a lot of our mentors in, in the industry. And then, you know, it's got to get past us and it's got to get past, you know, the people that we work with at Breakthrough, then it's got to get past another group of people and then the people at, at Warner. And, you know, we really want to make sure that once it gets up to the top level, it's something that we're really proud of. Um, the reason why we're doing films, um, the films that we're doing right now is because, you know, the slate was, the slate that we're doing um, with Warner Media, it's basically something that, um, they trust our content and us as creators and we want to make sure that when we give them something it's not just you know here's another generic whatever or you know they they're very busy people and it's really hard to get people to to read your scripts in the world um but these people they're they're so talented they're they're such good uh uh script storytellers and uh you know we want to make sure that whatever we're delivering to them is something that's that's of high quality so we are really really hard on our scripts and um you know it, it's something that that i think everyone really needs to be you know this idea that you know i've got a script let's go make it is uh it's definitely it's great and i mean i did it that's how i started making movies you know it's like we made a bunch of scripts that should never have been made um you know they weren't great at all but you know i got into filmmaking because of it so you know at that you know when you're just starting out it's like sometimes it is about just just making a script and getting it done you know it's like not the first thing that you make doesn't need to be the best thing in the world but again um you know i, I wish at an earlier age 
um, I had realized the value of really taking people's input and really focusing on on the story and your plot and your characters at, at script level and you know not assuming that you can fix it once you get to camera. Oh, it's great to hear all that insight because you know that's that's something that that I always look for when I'm when I'm reviewing any film, whether it's a big budget or an indie film, is you know a, a a good script with a lot of really really good ideas and and I agree with you on you know not being overly ambitious. I, I feel like that's one of the things that that happens sometimes with um, some of these uh, smaller indie films is being a little too ambitious and not being able to completely execute um, on those ideas um, and you know just kind of trusting what you have with the budget that you have and just kind of building off of that. Um, and that's something that I, that I see a lot with, um, with your films over at black fawn and speaking of black fawn films, where can people find, um, your films and where can people find you on social media? Uh, yeah, if you look up black fawn films or black fawn distribution, um, we have, uh, Every like, social media platforms, um, you know, we have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we're all over there. You'll find us there. Uh, you can also check out blackfontfilms.com, blackfontdistribution.com. And just so you know, the, the difference between them is Black Font Films is a company um, that me and Cody own. Uh, we're a production company that makes movies. And then Black Font Distribution is a totally different company with totally different people. Um, and we release films in, here in Canada. So Black Font Distribution, there's a bunch of films on there that, you know, we have nothing to do with actually making them. We just really like them, like Harpoon. You know, it's a, right. a awesome movie. We just released it. We're so pumped about it. Um, it's just, again, great storytelling, great characters, um, nice and simple, but just uh, a re really, really good film. Um, but we also release a bunch of our Black Font film movies through Black Font Distribution. Um, so if you want to check out most of our films or a lot of our films will be on, um, the black fund distribution site. You can order DVDs, Blu-rays, all that stuff there, uh, as well. We have a VOD platform on there, so you can actually go on and rent any of our films. And, uh, right now we've got a promotion. There are $2, $2 for seven day rental of them. So it's nice and cheap, nice and easy. Um, and then on top of that, um, we right now we actually have a 50 percent off sale on all of our products so right now we're we're selling a or we cut everything in half just because of this whole pandemic um so it's a really really great time to to reach out and and get some of the blu-rays and dvds that you like yeah and i was actually um on the site before uh we hopped on skype and i i'm definitely gonna be picking up a few of those movies on there because that's you know like you said a great deal and there's a lot of really uh fantastic films on there and i you know again love supporting indie films and for you know folks listening check out that website and you know support indie filmmakers um and chad thank you so much for joining me this was great being able to chat with you yeah thanks so much man it's uh yeah definitely a lot of fun it's uh it's rare sometimes that we get to chat about some of our older films so it's always a uh, always a fun experience yeah and i i loved hearing all of uh all the background behind those behind the films and i'm sure our listeners do uh, as well and folks i've left links um down below where you can go and check out black fawn films or vod as well as um where you can go and purchase some of the movies and thank you all again for listening to another episode of desmond's flicks be sure to follow me all over social media at Desmond's Flicks and check out my YouTube channel and Twitch channel at Desmond's Flicks. With all that said, I will see you all next week. Same spooky time, same spooky channel. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema B, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, 
Pick 6 Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.